Hey, hey, welcome back to a new life simulation game, First Look. And this is something that has popped up recently and they just dropped a free update that we're able to play. So this is a video about Viva Land. Dreamhouse specifically. So Dreamhouse is their demo of the build mode for this life simulation game. And Viva Land isn't your ordinary life sim game. It's the first of its kind that was built with co-op in mind from the ground up. The people who created this were the minds behind the Sims 4 multiplayer mod. They have brought their knowledge of life simulation and multiplayer gameplay to a whole new game. So Viva Land is that game. Viva Land Dreamhouse is the build mode of that. So we're gonna be talking about all the features, everything that comes along with it. And I'm gonna show you guys just kind of a little build that I did and share my thoughts about how I felt building in the game, as well as just showcasing all the features that there are, because this sounds like a really cool game and it's got a lot of creativity, a lot of freedom to do what you want. And you get to build with your friends if you want. You don't have to, but you can. So that's a great thing. If you're intrigued, stay tuned and we will get into the whole game overview and so much more, so. Hope you like this video. All right, so we're gonna dive headfirst into Dreamhouse, the prologue to Viva Land. This is a free to play demo. You can play it now for free on Steam. I will have a link in the description. And it's our first taste into Viva Land's incredible build mode. You and up to seven friends can claim lots in a vibrant town and embark on a journey of building your dream house. Whether you prefer to design solo or collaborate with friends, Viva Land's Dream House gives you the freedom to shape your virtual world how you see fit. And let's talk early development. Keep in mind, Viva Land is currently in its early stages of development. As with any growing project, you might encounter a bug or two, even find some features that are missing. The team at High Five Interactive is dedicated to crafting an unforgettable experience, and they do want our feedback to make Viva Land the best it can be. Kind of like Life by You and other games I've covered. This is something that they want our feedback. So make sure you hop into a demo and check it out for yourself. So first things first, you gotta name your town. Name it anything you like, anything that fits your fancy. I named mine Emo Land because I've been on an emo music kick lately and I thought it would be appropriate. And then I saw the town and saw how vibrant it was and realized it's gonna be hard to build dark stuff in this game, but I'm up for the challenge. And here we are in build mode. Here we have the power to build our house the way we want. And there's so many unique features that set this game apart from other building and simulation games that we are used to. And the first exciting feature is freedom from the grid. Say goodbye to grid constraint. Walls, fences, and roofs can be any size you want and any angle. The grid can be turned off for freeform placement, but if you want the guidance, you can still have a grid to snap to as well. And these have clear visual guides to help you along your way. As you can tell here, I'm just kind of showing off the different features and the build tools. You can create foundations, which I kind of forgot to do. You have to make the foundation before you make the build. Make your foundation walls first, like that and then build your walls on top of it. Even though I deleted it and went back because I wasn't sure I wanted to have a foundation on this build. Now you're gonna see me mess around with the painting of the walls and the colors and just taking a look at all the different surfaces and different things that you are able to use when building in Viva Land. I thought there was a good variety of tiles and a lot of really cool things to uh, make your build your own. And also, there is also the addition of the recolor feature. You can change the colors of everything just with the color wheel right there. So even if you like one thing but you want it to be a slightly different shade, you can adjust it as needed. And I thought that was just lovely. And not only for wallpaper and flooring, but also for objects which you will see here shortly. Also this build I'm not proud of. I just was really wanting to dig into the tools and see how everything worked. I definitely uh, didn't know how to do the roof for this build. So that is something I also struggled with and I didn't know how to do curved roofs. So that was also a problem. 
And yes, I know the walls are off angled. It's a part of its character, okay? <laughs> As you can see here, we're also creating these invisible walls, which makes it so that you can put flooring in certain areas. So say you're gonna block off a kitchen from the dining room and the living room, and then that's how you paint that area. I do wish you could hide the invisible walls a little bit, because they do get kind of in the way when you're trying to decorate, but hopefully that is a feature they can add in the future. Next, we're gonna look at doors. There wasn't too many doors, but I still think there was a decent enough amount of styles to get started with. Like they said, there's only, I think, seven different styles technically, but a ton of different items. And here, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of how the roof tools work. Overall, they're pretty simple. I just didn't know if I could do a round roof. So I kind of gave up in the end and just left it flat. But you can just see that it's very familiar if you played with like the sims you will understand the build tools and how you know clicking and dragging and everything works you can add to the surface a few tiles and different uh, roof pieces but i didn't love all the textures i wasn't sure which texture to use and so i kind of stuck with that rock looking one but I, i'm not sure if i love the textures of the roofs i i hope those can be improved a little bit because they feel a little bit like I don't know they just they feel a little bit off i'm like trying to make this work i'm like is there any way this will look good no there's not just give up i know also i noticed there's a time of day slider so you can change and see what time of day you're building in so the lighting can be however you want it you're not tied to the lot sliding only now we're gonna actually look at furniture so this game includes seven distinct styles, 830 items currently, and a whopping 140 plus floor and wall surface colors, not including color wheel colors, right? So those are all included in the game as making this video. And I'm sure that's only gonna be improved upon and developed more as the game gets closer to actual release. So we're just gonna work on the kitchen and see all the different options. There are really nice looking cabinets and corner pieces and they slot pretty well together. There's a little bit of quirkiness when trying to slot things next to a wall, but I, I figured it out. I think it was a me problem more than anything. Yeah, there was like one thing that was colliding with the wall there and I was trying to fix it. I didn't know how to fix it. There is dishwashers. You can turn off snapping so you can place things kind of freely as well. So if you're having any issues with the snapping, turn that off and see if that makes it better for you. I think I did that for a lot of the kitchen because I was like, I'm not sure. And I like how you can like adjust the flooring like a minuscule amount. You don't have to do like grid amount, right? It just stretches the pattern to the point that you pull the invisible wall, which is really, really nice to get very precise floor plan designs. I think we'll be able to make actual floor plans from real life in the game without it feeling like off because of the grid system. So I'm excited for that. I love building recreations of different builds from real life in the game. So I'm excited to see what this lets me build. Even if the build tools are a little finicky right now, I feel like they could use a little more polish, obviously, and I need more practice with learning how to use every tool because it's a little bit different. It's not exactly how Sims is, but it's similar enough where if you are someone who has built in The Sims, you should be able to pick this up. And also, I want to show off this really cool color wheel part with the counters, which obviously, you know, Sims 3, we kind of had this and it's come back where you can basically set your own swatches, change the, the tile color, the cabinet color, the knobs of the cabinet colors are also a thing that you can uh, edit. So you can really design every little detail of most objects. And I love being able to change the sink color. How cool is that? There's just so many things that you can do. And it may be a little overwhelming to some newer builders, but I think it's something that a lot of 
people who have built a lot wanted more of this type of freedom. So here you go. And the great thing is you can save swatches. So you can be like, hey, I'm gonna save this color I love and copy it over to the next one and reuse it. So then you don't have to like remember the color, or forget what it is. You can just copy the style over to it, which is really great. And now we're gonna take a look at the kitchen clutter and decorations. As you can tell, there's a bunch of options already. And the great thing about a lot of these objects is they are resizable. So you not only can place them freely on the counter, wherever you want, you can also put stuff within like that basket right there. You can resize them up to a certain point and pretty much every object has that ability. So I think you can like make things exactly the right proportions to fit into your kitchen. And I think that just looks really, really good. And again, all the color swatches, you can change every little piece of every object. Then we're gonna take a look at lighting. So I did not get the lighting to work <laughs> personally. Um, I don't know if it's a bug or if I just wasn't doing it right, but like they didn't turn on. There's no way that I could have seen to turn on the lights. Uh, so I did put some lights to make it look like there's something, but uh, it doesn't actually do anything, at least right now, or at least when I recorded this. I don't know, maybe if they've fixed that since, but for some reason the lights were uh, a little funky. I even tried going into the dark and <laughs> Thing if it would just auto turn on and they just did nothing. I was like, huh, okay, uh, that's fine. Anyways, let's look at stairs. We also have these beautiful resizable stairs where you can kind of just click and drag and make them as wide as you want. They don't have to be, you know, grid size. I was struggling with the columns here to get the columns to actually look aligned and good, but maybe that was just a me problem. I don't know. I feel like this game is like a little finicky, but also it just takes time to learn how to uh, use it. Also, they have like half columns that you're seeing there. And I think I realized that was kind of what I wanted, but I couldn't put it on the corner. So I don't know, it was a little, it was a little weird. I will say, I think that needs some improvements. And then there's these other half columns that I put around the door and I thought that looked nice. And then we looked at the windows, which seemed pretty cool, but there wasn't too many options for windows right now. They did look interesting. And also that you can change the window color and the frame of the window uh, separately was really, really nice. I was looking for some smaller windows to put in the kitchen to like kind of have a nice view leading out to the lake because you know you're gonna be using the kitchen and staring at the wall so you might as well have some windows. I do wish we had more options for windows and I don't think the windows were resizable like I was hoping they would have some resizing but there was not uh, and here you're seeing me mess around with the fence tool and it looks like you kind of draw out using just a white picket fence your outline and then you place the other designs on top of it so I was just kind of messing around with figuring out how this worked and it was kind of a little bit uh tricky to make it straight if you turn off the uh the snapping you can make it diagonal you can make it on any angle and stuff so which is good but also kind of dangerous and then the path tool oh boy the pathing tool <laughs> i struggled on this a lot i don't really know if i figured out how to make it look good but I noticed that like it was creating a path and then like you could adjust the path afterwards. So I kind of was able to get it how I wanted, but it still was like kind of weird. And we'll say the path thing was like not very intuitive. I was like, oh, I just want to draw this straight path out. And it was not that easy. <laughs> you see, there's like a ton of nodes and a ton of different things to click on that make it just a little confusing. I like that you can like rotate the paths and then I kind of was figuring out how to make a, a, a one path and then yeah I don't know what I was doing. I was just trying to trying to make it work but it was weird. It was weird. I don't know why it was so difficult. <laughs> I'm sure just working with it more I'd understand it but first thoughts about it, it was a little bit confusing. Where I tried so many different things to try to make it do what I was wanting it to do and it just didn't. So in the end I kind of made a funky looking uh, front area because it just was the only way I could make it somewhat look good. Even if it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> As you can tell I struggle a lot. The pathing path looks nice. I do like that uh, brick. I thought it went well with our kind of gothic-y uh, feel. And then we're looking at landscaping, which I do have some issues with the landscaping. There's, you know, not very much yet. It does look decent, but you also cannot like layer 
things. As you can tell, the plants will look red when they're too close to each other. So you're not able to place them even like, I don't know if there's a, like a move object cheat or something, but like, I feel like it's weird that you can only place a certain amount of distance away from each other when like you can put objects on counters wherever you want. So I feel like that definitely needs to be improved upon because you can't really make the pretty, you know, like multiple layered flower areas with this game in its current state. Is what it is. I'm sure it will be something that will be improved in the future. And again, still working on the path thing. I did like there was a few nice little rocks. I'm not sure if they were resizable or not. I don't remember. Oh, we also had ivy. You see this gorgeous ivy? And the great thing about the ivy, it's also resizable. So you're kind of able to just like get it exactly where you want it. No more are you stuck to the size that they give you, right? Like it's just so pretty. I could imagine such like gorgeous builds with ivy just all over it. There's a nice little flower pots, a little bit window planters, but I didn't really have a good spot for window planters. I just put one in the back just to kind of see what it looked like. Don't mind the thing on the right there sticking out. Um, I didn't realize that. It's fine. This build obviously isn't amazing, but it's just more just looking at every aspect of the game and the tools and how they work in its current state. The flowers are pretty, but we definitely need more. There's just not a ton of variety. And the hedges, you couldn't get the hedges close enough to the fence, which was kind of annoying. I definitely uh, will want that to be improved because it looks weird with like a six inch gap in between the fence and the hedge, right? Lanterns were nice. I don't think they did anything again. The lighting I think was messed up. I just thought I would put some down and see if they turned on. They did not. And I think it was pretty in the end, even though, you know, ignore the left side. <laughs> just this part looked good. <laughs> oh, I did notice we had a mailbox. Of course, had to put a mailbox in, but you couldn't put too close to things. Again, it was kind of annoying. You had to space things out in a weird way. I really don't like that. And there it is. There's our home. If you guys want to build in Viva Land as well, you can download the demo. That's pretty much it. I just want to show you guys like the lighting looks really cool inside with the kitchen there and the shadows. And uh, yeah, there's our house in our world. Our lakeside retreat. A little bit gothic weird home. <laughs> Let me know what you think about Viva Land as a whole. If you think it's going to be a good life simulation game, what are your thoughts about the build mode so far? And yeah, I look forward to covering more about this game as we get more information about it. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.